Hey friends, it's Mel. Welcome to my kitchen. Tonight I have some dinner ideas for you that are so fast, so easy, using the simplest ingredients, but you would never know it by the delicious taste. If that sounds good to you, just hang on, sit back, relax, grab your sweet tea, and let me do the cooking. Hey friends, tonight I'm going to try to cook this little meal while I get to talk to you. You hardly ever, ever get to see me like cooking with you in here. I'm always got the kitchen, you know, full of us. Our, my kitchen is right in the center, you know, of our house and everybody's usually here. We're talking about the day, but tonight we're going to throw a chicken pot pie together and we'll just go through it together, hopefully. Okay, kind of laid out here are all the fixings. And this has become my favorite way to make a chicken pot pie. I used to just get the refrigerated or the freezer pie crust. That was easy. But I had forgotten about how good the Bisquick stuff tastes. You know, the things with the Bisquick toppings. And I made this. It's been months ago. And I thought, that is what I'm wanting. And this is easy peasy. Got my oven heated to 400. I've got a pie plate and I just sprayed it. And I have some chicken here. Let's see if I can show you that. I cooked this up yesterday in the crock pot. And, oh lordy, yesterday. It was, you know, my day off from work work. But I was trying to finish up that cast iron video that um, went up. And I don't know, this still like the devil did not want me to make that video. It was, I was having so many just technical problems getting the editing and all that. By the time supper rolled around, I had something, like I said, that I wanted to do with that. And I said, you know what? We're having a pizza tonight. That's what we're doing. Somebody go get a pizza out of the freezer before I lose my mind. So anyhow, I thought I'd make a chicken pot pie. Okay, it says take a cup of chicken. I have made this with just a can of that chunk chicken before, if you don't have any chicken cooked up. But that looks kind of skimpy, so I'm going to throw some more in here. And you can just mix all this up right here in your pie plate. And I'm going to take a can of cream of chicken soup. Well, that's a pretty sound. Now, it says like to use frozen vegetables, like maybe almost two cups. I just don't like frozen vegetables in my chicken pot pie. I don't like the texture of it. I would much rather have this can of veg all. And I've showed you guys this before because I eat a lot of tuna salad and chicken salad made out of those cans of uh, tuna and chicken. And I've showed you how I use this and you like press it down into your can and it drains off your stuff. But one of y'all smart people showed me this. I press it down in my can to drain the water off my tuna, but you said if you turn that upside down, you can drain your veggies. Because I'm bad to like take my lids off my cans and throw them away and then I'll be like, oh, I need to drain that. I don't want to dig that back out of the trash. <laughs> so let me drain this. I'll be right back. Worked like a charm. Look at that. And I'm just going to dump that in there. And I had to go back and look at my video to remember which chicken pot pie recipe it was that I used that I liked so much. And I had actually used this Badia Complete in it. And I forgot I had this. I was talking to somebody in the comments about this. I forgot all about getting this. So I'm going to put a little bit of that in it again. Then a very little salt because that probably has salt. It said mainly like vegetables and garlic and onion, but um, I'm gonna give it a little extra pepper and then that's salt. Then you're just gonna mix all this up. Just right here in your pie plate. I hope y'all enjoyed that cast iron video that came up on Wednesday this week. That was a labor of love and I knew that was not gonna be a video that was gonna you know, get a whole lot of views, but I wanted to have that just really for myself, and 
hopefully somebody will find it useful. It might get searched some if somebody's looking to redo some cast iron. But we really did have a good time that day um, watching Ryan do all that work. <laughs> and that piece has turned out so pretty. And oh Lord, that bread, watching that footage back when I was working on that. I could just remember how awful that one batch was, that dough. Oh, Lordy, that was misery right there. But I'm pretty good bread maker now, at least that one recipe. All right, now we'll just set that to the side. In here is going to be your topping, and this is a cup of baking mix. This is what I'm finishing up. I buy Kroger brand or Walmart brand baking mix instead of Bisquick, and this is about the end of this one. So you use a cup of that, then a half a cup of milk, and an egg. And then we're just going to beat that up. Oh, you know what I forgot? I always put a little cheese on mine. Let me grab the cheese. Here's what we got, so we're going to throw that in. I'm sure out there in the freezer, I probably got a five-gallon bucket of cheddar cheese, but I don't have any in here in the refrigerator. So we're just going to use this. I would normally mix this in, but since I've already mixed it, veggies, I don't want them to get mushy. And it doesn't take much, but cheese just gives it, mmm, just yummy. It just gives it a little bit of a tang you know, a little something extra. So that reminds me, I need to get out there and dig me some cheddar cheese out of the freezer. Okay, that looks pretty good. And you're just going to pour this over the top. And it doesn't have to be spread out, you know, just perfect or nothing like that. This is all going to bake up together. Let me grab my spoon here and get every bit of this out. Just kind of spread that around this Bisquick. You know, it puffs up when it's cooking. It'll get brown and all that. So, there is this. Let me get it in the oven. It's going in uncovered. 400 degrees for 30 minutes. And I will probably go out here and dig something up out of the freezer. Maybe I'd love to have a big salad with this on the side, but I just don't have any salad fixings. I get groceries tomorrow, and I am just plumb out. I've made it another two weeks. The only thing I had to fill in was some bread and... Hamburger buns, some cheese and eggs. So about $10 worth of stuff. So that's pretty good. So I've got that in the oven now and I'll go over here. It's probably going to be corn and green beans. You really don't have to have anything else with this. It's got your meat, your protein, you know, in the chicken. You got your veggies and then you've got your bread in the topping. So really you could just have it on its own, but I'm not real good about that. I like stuff to be on the side. And um, like I said, I don't have any salad, but I might have a bag of frozen uh, broccoli out here that I could throw in the microwave. Oh, that would really tickle everybody here. <laughs> they don't really like that. I like steamed broccoli. Me and Callie do, but Patrick and Maddie, not so much. They'll eat it. Well, Maddie eats it raw in a salad. They wouldn't like that, but you know, it'll be a surprise to us all when we come back and everything's done and we see what I find. Okay, shocker. I have green beans going back here. You can hear how hard I cook my green beans. I let them cook a few minutes real hard like that. Just salt, pepper, butter, a little bacon grease or oil. Then I'll cut them down and just let them simmer till they're almost dry. And here's another little life hack. I never have enough spoon rest, so I just always leave my can out and set my spoon in them. Now, I was tickled with this. I found some little ears of corn in the cob that I forgot about I had in the freezer. I don't know. There's something about 
when it first starts getting warm, like I am ready. I'm wanting the corn. I want some fried squash and zucchini. But um, man, when it first starts getting warm, it's like bring on the garden veggies. I'm gonna bag this up, and I this is my chicken here, and I'm just gonna go ahead and put that in. It'll probably fit in like a quart size freezer bag, and then I'll set it in the fridge. And if I want to use it, you know, here in the next day or two, I'll have it. And if not, I can stick it straight into the freezer and then, you know, pull it out when I'm ready to use it. And when I cook my chicken in the crock pot, like I'll do this about once a week, I'll just put it on in the morning. I put it right in there straight from frozen, and I'll throw some salt and pepper some garlic powder and some onion powder in there and then mix up depending on how much chicken i have either a cup or half a cup of chicken broth out of that bouillon and i'll just cut it on low and let it cook all day long then when i get home i can just use my little chopper tool and it'll shred right up oh it's beautiful set it down here very gently Look how pretty. You can see it bubbling out around the edges there. We'll just let this sit here while my green beans are cooking. And I don't know if this corn's ever going to boil. Looking good. And here is that beautiful chicken pot pie coming out. I love that bisquick topping. And I love to kind of crunch it up and then go back in and get some of the filling and mix it in with it. It was so good. And that corn on the cob really hit the spot. That was so delicious. You can whip this up in no time flat and it just takes about 30 minutes in the oven. We thoroughly enjoyed this chicken pot pie. Now, who doesn't have a couple of half-open bags of burritos in their freezer? Is this just my house, or does everybody have multiple bags of the same stuff open? <laughs> now, for this recipe, you can use any kind or style of burritos that you like, and you are not going to pre-cook these. If you wanted to, you could a little bit, but I've never had any trouble with them being real soggy, so I just cook mine straight from frozen. And you're going to put on an entire can of enchilada sauce. I like red. If you want green, use whatever you like. This is very customizable to whatever you like. And just honestly, whatever you have in your cabinet. And this is definitely enough topping. If you had a couple more burritos to squeeze in there, I mean, you could probably cover 8 to 10 burritos with this. And I'm taking a four ounce can of green chilies and spreading that over the top. And then comes the cheese. And I'm just finishing out a bag of Colby Jack and then I have some Mexican cheese. Because what is a frozen burrito enchilada casserole without cheese, right? And that is all there is to this. And I've got my oven preheated to 350 degrees and I am gonna cover this and you're gonna bake it about 40 or 45 minutes. Then take your aluminum foil off, turn your broiler on, but just watch it real carefully. You do not want those to burn. And I found this recipe from my friend Valerie. Her channel is called Life with Valerie Rose. She made this, and this is like the second time that I've made it now. And I am just doctoring up some refried beans with a little sour cream and some taco sauce. You can see when I am serving this up how nice those frozen burritos hold together. And I'm gonna build some tostadas to go with this. I'm just putting my beans and my cheese. And you know how I feel about lettuce. I love a lot of crunchy lettuce on my things. And using some pico, some sour cream on my burrito, and this wonderful avocado ranch. We just put this Taco Bell sauce on everything. This is a big bag of tostadas that I had to get when I made crunch wraps. So I'm trying to get these used up. And there's always some in this bag that are broken. So I'm just breaking them up a little bit more and I'm just going to leave them as some chips. So we have had 
crunch wraps out of this bag of tostadas, and then we've had some tostadas, chips with them, and I'm going to make another tostada next week out of this. But look at these flavors. You would think I had been slaving all day in there putting this Mexican inspired dish together, but that little cheater frozen burrito saved the day. Now this smothered pork chops is one of my favorite go-to meals. And in my crock pot, I have sprayed it down and I've put in a can of cream of chicken soup. And I'm gonna stir in about two cups of chicken broth. You're gonna put an envelope of onion soup mix, the dry kind, a packet of pork gravy, or in this case, I didn't have it, I had chicken gravy. It's fine, you could use brown gravy. Gravy is gravy. I'm also putting in some garlic powder and I'm just going to stir all that together. I do not put any salt in this because all these powders and stuff have plenty of salt in them so it really doesn't need it. Now I'm using two packs of the thin boneless pork chops. That is just my preference. You could use bone in, whatever you like. But I had two little packs of these, so I had about eight chops in here. And I just try to get them all covered and spread out in my crock pot. It's okay if they're not in a single layer. They're all going to cook up fine. But I just try to take some of that soup mixture and just spoon it over them and just get them all a little bit covered. And I'm doing this at probably 6.30 or 7 o'clock in the morning. And this sets on low all day long till I get home around four o'clock. And you'll see how nice it looks. And the first thing I realized was that I forgot to put any pepper in it. <laughs> Those uh, 6.30 crock pot mornings, sometimes we just don't know what all goes in that crock pot <laughs> at that time of the day. But anyhow, I just put me some pepper in it, stirred it around and checked my gravy. Not hardly as thick as I like, so uh, make me up a little slurry. I just use some flour and water. If you have cornstarch, that's fine. But I just mix that up and then I'm gonna pour it in and I do turn it up on high for about you know 20 or 30 minutes while I'm finishing supper. Put the lid on it and it'll thicken that gravy right up. And here are my fancy sides for the night. I'm telling you, this was a week. I had to have some dinners that were easy. And these are our little carrots, just butter, brown sugar, cook them hard, and let them simmer. My husband loves these. He loves the brown sugar and the sweets. Look at this yummy meal coming together. That beautiful gravy, just put that over my chops and my mashed potatoes. Had green beans and carrots, and you know, we needed some macaroni and cheese around here this night. This is another comfort favorite meal. I love these any time of year. Now y'all know my husband has this new smoker he's been playing with. He got this brisket. He has a whole process of why he decided to get it ground up. It wasn't exactly the grade or something that he wanted, but it was a really good deal and he didn't want to pull his smoker out this night, but he definitely wanted to try some of it. He is just going to fry us up some burgers in a cast iron skillet. Now he's using this Wagyu beef fat. He said the brisket is not as fat and this Wagyu is supposed to give it a really good flavor. So he is melted some of that and heated it up and gonna fry these burgers up in it. I'm trying to remember, I think he got this for about $2 a pound, but we have some of it, he's mixed up different things in it, seasoning wise, and he's gonna smoke those burgers. Some of it we just left in like one pound increments to use in place of ground beef, but we're just gonna try a whole lot of different things with it. And this brisket burger was very good. It was very juicy, sitting in all of that fat, and very flavorful. So I really appreciated this night. I had some tater tots on the side and a little bit of leftover baked beans. But we've been eating a lot of different burgers and things off of that smoker since he has gotten it. Friends, I hope that this very simple, no frills, what's for dinner video has helped you. Maybe you needed some inspiration 
or you just wanted to try something different, but I hope it has helped you in your meal planning for the week. I thank you so much for being here. As always, I pray that you have a blessed week, and I send you love from my kitchen.